prior from the floor. I'm not sure if some of the dates are still valid uh, within those announcements, but you see as the current come forth with the announcements. Uh, following that, we will hear one more, uh, one more selection, amen, and then after that, you will hear the voice of my friend. In fact, I'm going to introduce my friend right now. Um, me and Pastor Newman, Pastor Fox Newman, have been friends for quite a while now. I actually met him through my brother, uh, Pastor Randy Brundage. Um, but when you meet somebody, you find out that you have a kindred spirit, kinship. Amen. You, you, you kind of gravitate towards that person. Amen. Uh, we, we talk often, um, we laugh, and we make jokes. We humanize. But I enjoy his presence. I enjoy the anointing on his life. I enjoy the fact that the Lord uses him in some realms that people don't even understand. Amen. Uh, everybody's not going to understand where you're going. There's not been for everybody to understand. I'm not preaching. I have, I have a gentleman here that's going to be the oracle of the day. Amen. He's the oracle of the day. Amen. So I will not preach. Amen. But I, I asked her. Uh, Minister Folk comes and gives us our announcements, and then following that, we will hear one more uh, rendition, one more song, and then we will go forward in the Word of God. Amen. I, mean, I ask you to be kind enough and deference and reverence for the Word of God that you would rest in me as we approach this sacred death. Amen. This death is sacred. Amen. 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 Minister Folk, please. There are a couple announcements that we made last week that um, I believe one is it has been extended. I am not 100% sure on that. Um, Erie County and community departments, they are offering grief and support services. Um, they're looking for donators and volunteers. There's food and community services. It's going to be at the Johnny B. Wiley to play Radio Jefferson and Best Street, right around the corner from us. Um, it says here until the 28th, but I believe they extended that another week. I'm not 100% positive, but you can contact them uh, to be sure. Uh, there's a number, 716-834-3131. This information I'll put it on the board. The one that is still in effect is save the date. Please save the date. Buffalo Employment and Training Center Summer Career Fair. It's happening Thursday, July 28th. July 28th. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Where it's going to be at the Employment and Training Center, 77 Little Street. Uh, there's a, a, a website information you can get to. There's a phone number. Um, there's too much to read to, for you to copy it all at this time. But I'll make sure that those are put on the bulletin board that are there at the church uh, for someone if you're interested in it. It helps you learn how to dress for success and resume writing. I've been out of I've been out of the resume business quite some time, so um, my resume was is out of date compared to what they're doing today. So uh, I would advise you if you're looking for to create a resume for a job, please take the time. Remember the date, July 28th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 77 Goodall Street, Buffalo Employment and Training Center. Each and every Tuesday, we have our, our men's meeting. The men's meeting comes past the world to send out text messages for you to teach, to show you how to get connected to that. If you have a cell phone, if you have a, a regular landline, if you have a laptop, if you have an iPad, any type of data device like that, you can get connected and be a part of uh, our men's organization. Very good discussions are going on on those days. And, uh, men, if you're not a part of that, you're missing out on a lot of good information that can help you in your daily lives. On Thursdays, we have our Bible study, prayer and Bible study. Uh, again, Pastor will send out information to tell you how to get on. It's very simple. 
not complicated. Um, we have a variety of different topics dealing with the, with the Bible. So it would be worth your while. The Word tells us to study to show ourselves approved. So we need to study God's Word. And that's why we established Thursdays for a Bible study. I believe that concludes our announcements for today.
the Lord, everybody.
very small man at that. And he knew 52 languages. He was very skilled, very well taught, very versed, uh, very educated, wise. He never right. bragged about who he was. Right. But he was uh, uh, talking to the Galatians church, but also some of the ministers in that church uh -huh. who rose up against him. Right. Anytime you stand for the truth of God, people are going to come up against you. Amen. How can you fight a God that's holy when he made you? How can you fight a God that saved you and gave his only begotten son? How can you fight the word when we are in the word? And we are out of the word. We're a body of organisms, not organizations. Amen. We're children of the Most High God. I say the children of the cross, the whip, and up under the blood. We're still sealed into the day of redemption. But these Galatian believers wanted to fight Apostle Paul about the truth. And their truth was religiosity. They did not believe in the whole word. Amen? And you must believe the whole word. The word faith means to become weak or dizzy or to fall out. Uh, the number of man meaning six. The chapter six is number of man. Nine, harvest, fruit and deliverance. You must be faith delivered as you study the word. All of us are in X of some kind. No man can judge another man. And it's a sad thing to fight men in leadership. Remember the uh, sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Jacob? Right. When Noah was intoxicated and he was uh, naked, two of his sons covered him. This is what we need to do in modern day Christianship as believers. Stop trying to uncover our fathers and cover them. Amen. You've got people who try to uncover pastors in, in authority and in leadership when you yourself are not fully covered. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. You sit up under leadership so you can be groomed, taught, birthed, birthed, go forth. You must stay covered up under leadership, not fight the leader. Mm -hmm. And another thing, you can come to church and not be covered up under the leader. Right. Amen? Say it, say it, say it. Everybody's not saved, but God wants to save all. Amen? Uh, the purpose here, Paul learned that certain Jewish teachers were unsettling in this new converse in Galatia by imposing them of the circumcision in the yoke of the Masonic law. They still believe that when baby boys were born, they had to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. You don't hear about baby boys being circumcised much in this day. But me coming up and born in 68, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, and the 70s, baby boys were circumcised before they can go home. But these, these Masonic uh, Jewish believers still believe in the circumcision, but the wrong one, you must be circumcised at the heart. The heart, right. the foreskin, the layer of the skin. God circumcises the heart. He changes your heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. You have to be circumcised. You have to have a, a divine revelation from the Father. When he saves you, sometimes God himself will come to you and reveal himself to you and show you who he is. But God never really shares his glory. And no one can really look at God. Mm -hmm. Nobody can look at God, but you have to have his spirit. The right. scripture says, those that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen? Amen. Imposing circumcision of the Messiah's law, for salvation is included in the church. On hearing this, Paul wrote, number one, to deny empathy that legal requirements such as circumcision under the old covenant have nothing to do with operation of God's grace in Christ. The first thing of all that we hear the word legal or legalism. That's going into church doctrine. You're tampering with something there. But if you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, he's the one that changes your heart. Remember Apostle Paul used to fight the Christians? Now he's a pastor and instructor right. of Christianity. Right. One of the forefathers of the gospel. People felt that he should have been one of the twelve apostles. But he accepted his call years after in right. the middle of Acts. Right. His role of Damascus experience. Mm -hmm. We all have a role of Damascus experience where God had to come and change our lives. So it says here, number two, to refer clearly that we receive the Holy Spirit and new life. 
The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And that is some of the teachings that, that you need to hear. The new life in Christ. And it was also new converts who were being persecuted. In that environment, it was paganistic mm -hmm. religion. Idol worship, small right. gods, right. but not the God. Holy, separate, and distinct. Come on, if you're going to serve God, serve him with a full heart, a whole heart. Holistic, holy living is still required. Right. Now, when you're living holy, expect the religious to come after you. They will come after you, fight you, rise up against you. How can you uh, rise up against somebody who's born again? Well, the psalmist said it in Psalms 105, verse 15. And touch not mine anointed, do my prophets no harm. What do you say there? If you're anointed by the Holy Spirit, no one has the right to bring an offense to you. They will pay the price and the penalty. Amen? So we have to be mindful as new converts to reconfirm and affirm by the Holy Spirit and new life. But your faith is in Jesus Christ. Your faith is in Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Everybody in God's house is not a believer. Let God be the separated from the wheat and the tear. The goat from the sheep. God comes to bring right in the body the word of truth. He comes to bring us to a place to say, those are mine. That one's mine. He knows, he knows his own. He knows the cry of the righteous. He knows who sit in authority, who sits in position. He knows what you've been called to be before you were called out of your mother's womb. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about you and knows you're going to pursue this life and this walk in Christ. But in this day, we see a lot of trouble in the Christian race. Mm -hmm. You see more divorces in God's church. And that don't look good in God's eyesight because that's an honorable thing. Mm -hmm. You have to live a holy life. You see a lot of people that's going to the unjust judge in the courthouse when we don't even supposed to go into the house of that house. Come on, We're supposed to live holy, pray, mm -hmm. fast, study. That's what he was teaching. He was grooming this church. Because there was a lift in this church. He was teaching them as a father in the tentacles of this church. The living church. The living way. He's teaching them as a father. But anytime you start taking your place in God's house, uh -huh. you can expect trouble to come. Everybody's not on one accord. Everybody's not for you. Even when Jesus taught the twelve apostles, there's always a Judas. Mm -hmm. And there's also a Peter. Come on. So what are we doing? We ask God to shape in our character. We don't come here pointing the finger, judging, but allow God's Holy Spirit to nurture you, cover you, uh, secure you, deliver you. God is still working on all of us in the body of Christ. Man. So do not faint. In spite of what you see, you see murder on the increase. Do not faint. They're trying to remove the commandments out of the courthouse. Do not faint. They're trying to change immorality. But do not faint. God don't want us to faint. Everybody is not strong in the house of God. They is. They is. Some people can't stand to be tested. You come out of one test and then into, take a deep breath and come another test. Oh my God. I don't care what you say. I've been at this since I was 21, 53 years old. Not candid about my age to God being glory. But it's nothing but God's grace that has come up. There's nothing but God's grace that have kept me thus this far. I've seen people go back into the world. Amen. Leave Christ because they couldn't stand the test. Mm. You have to develop, be developed as a believer. And you want to see where the saints really are? This is not to be critical. Ask them to get this slide and pray for 30 minutes. You'll find out where they are. Because you've got to be in contact and fine tune with the God that made you. You cannot faint. You cannot give up. But Pastor Newman, these tests are, are hard. They're hard to deal with. Yes, they are. It does take a toll on your emotions. That's why when you go into prayer, you release. But God still don't want you to faint. And when you finish praying, don't start murmuring and complaining. Because that prayer was in vain. Have you ever prayed and it felt like the prayers went up to the ceiling and came back down? 
It takes fasting to get those prayers loose. What will cause you to faint? Disbelief. Doubt. Mm -hmm. People being negative in your spirit and in your ear. Right. Get away from negative people. Even in the house of faith, in the house of God. Get away from negative people. Stay fine-tuned up in prayer. But God don't want us to faint. Mm -hmm. God does not want us to faint. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Even Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah 52, verse number 12, speaks about the Messiah coming. Right. He spoke about him coming. His coming was not in vain. So we have no reason to faint. If Jesus was persecuted, and he was, guess what? He never fainted. He died. He was hung up for our hang ups. Mm -hmm. Man. He took, he took even the very sins of this world. He was the gift, the atonement, right. the offering. Right. He died for all of our sins and all of our faults. Uh -huh. He died there for us as an offering. No one else could have done it better than Jesus Christ. Say it. Say it. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus Christ who came to fulfill the law. He did not break it. He came to fulfill it. So those Galatian believers had a problem with still believing in the law. Right. Mm -hmm. I heard a man say something when people would join his church and he would ask him about the confession of their faith. He would say, some people just don't believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They have their own confession. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people have their own beliefs. How can they be changed? By the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something else. It's not good to preach all of your people's faith. Sometimes people need to be sat down and taught. Sir? Taught. What we used to call the morning bench. Taught. Mm -hmm. When people join the church, new converts, you have to be watchful. Bring them back up on the watch chair. So you can watch over their souls and see where they are. Right. And some people come from a different uh, background of teaching. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't seem to grasp and understand of the word of God. For us to understand the word of God, you have to sit up under a, a pastor who has a prophetic ear, who hears the voice of God, who can groom you, who can teach you, who can birth you. And when he's trying to teach you, you don't rebel. You sit there long enough so he can birth you in position, in authority. But he has to hear from the Father. He has to hear from the Father. And the Father will instruct the shepherd how to talk to you, how to birth you. How to bring you forth. But religiosity, absolutely not. You have to be born again. Sir. You have to be born again. Born well, today, and I'm not going to be a good one. You have to be, you're a young convert, but you have to be born again. And it takes steps. You have to go through the process. The process. The process. And everybody can't be processed. If you did a lot of sin out there, the same measurement that you're going to face is even in the church. Man. From process from the sinner to salvation to Christianity. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot. Mm -hmm. Some people can't just, you, you say something to some of these people and they say they blow up. They can't take it. Mm -hmm. So you have to pray that God will heal their mind, heal their spirit, heal their brokenness. Right. All of us are ah, still ah. in even right. what we just experienced on Jeffrey. I'm still recovering from that. So we're in a land of recovery. But those two people were assassinated and killed. God is still recovering all of us from that because that was a hard blow. So what are you saying, Pastor Newman? God is still in the process of healing the land. He is. Amen? Amen? So let us stay focused. But if anything you do, don't faint. Don't give up. Stay focused, stay plugged in to the church of the living God. Don't allow somebody to pull you back. And, don't, and this is another thing with wisdom as I close. Don't allow people to pull on your spirit. Sir. Stop letting people drain your spirit. Mm. Drain your inner man. Stay plugged into and do what Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church. Come out from among them. Separate yourself. Pray and study. Get in the word for yourself. Don't allow somebody to pull on your spirit when God is revealing himself to you. And, and, and another thing, stay off that phone. Uh -huh. Sometimes you got to separate yourself from Facebook. Separate yourself from sometimes your family members. 
Because God wants to talk to his sheep. And all sheep are not right. Ooh. All sheep are not right. No, they're not. That's why God made shepherds. He is the good shepherd. And he is the only way. And he is the door. Get yourself plugged into God's work. Don't let all this warfare and foolishness get in your spirit. And some people can pull in your spirit so bad until you will faint. Mm. You start being oppressed by their spirit. Same. You have to be very, very careful in Christianity who you allow in your ear. The only voices you should be hearing is the voice of your Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the shepherd of the house. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that controlling? No, it isn't. You're supposed to be plugged into God's people. Or organism. Not organization. Amen? Don't faint. No matter what you see. No matter who comes, who goes. Don't faint. Amen? So be encouraged on today. I told you I had to be a king. But do that which the Father has called you to do. Stay plugged into God's church. God's people. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Pastor Father Newman and release the word of the house. It's important that in the time and the season of mourning we transition. It's a life of existing in different areas and as the life transitions, sometimes there's friction. So as we go through these times, these trials and tribulations, uh, the Apostle Peter said these words, Beloved, think of it not strange. First Peter 4 and 12. He said, think of it not strange. So what Peter is saying is this, is that, you know what, it may feel uh, very strange, but don't think of it strange. Because the same God that wants you through is going to do it. Amen? The same God that wants you to and bring you through it. And with all this going on in our communities, within uh, different, within our country, from the time that we started going through this thing uh, with this thing called COVID and then the, um, some of the uh, social injustice, the uprising, uh, the, uh, with our own, uh, our own uh, country's uh, White House, the place where everything was supposed to be established from, uh, that's going through the insurrection. You know, just the, everything that's been going on within this country. It can wear you down. It can wear you down. Amen. But I thank God that He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and the Lord. I thank God for how He operates, even though we don't know what He's doing and why He's doing it. But everything transitions, forgive me. Everything happens for a reason. Amen. Amen. So. Again, we want to let's give the man God a hand, not to praise, amen. 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 Uh, now we will be going forward uh, in our offering church, amen. We have full of praises, we have a scripture already. Uh, we're going forward in our offering church, amen. And for those of you that are on stage, we'll get sold. Uh, if you are not here, of course, with us in the building, you can. So, or send your time to Church of God Tabernacle, uh, 526 High Street, Church of God Tabernacle, 526 High Street, and that is on Tithing. The application we have is Tithing. Amen. Amen. So, let's hope we perform our scripture. We always have a scripture in the live box. It's important. So, your tithe first to your home church. Amen. And then after that, you will get your offering church. Amen. Your offering will be given uh, unto whoever you decide. Amen. But I believe that the season can be so in this place where uh, there's a release is going on constantly. Amen. Let's conclude. Okay, one second.
everyone have an offering? Does everyone have an offering? Okay, we're in a good place. We're in a good place. Dixie. Dixie.
mighty name of Jesus. And let your angels guard us. In Jesus' name we pray. In the church of God's name, amen. 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 Listen, Zoom and Facebook, God bless you. We will see you, Lord willing, to be the Lord of Father next week. Be blessed and enjoy your day. You are dismissed, everyone. Listen, go enjoy your day. It is 12 o'clock. Someplace, somewhere, somebody is eating dinner or breakfast or something. Amen? That's a hint. Huh? Yeah, I know. They want to say. Let me say.